my Bible went from looking like this to this. <laughs> came and lifted up. How does this happen? What does it do to the spine? How, we'll get all into it. Let's begin. A few months ago, my Bible itself went viral on like TikTok and Instagram. I thought it was like the weirdest thing ever. I mean, that's a weird thing to go viral. And I got a lot of questions about what Bible is that? And how did you get it to look like that? And in some ways I like really didn't want to address that question because I don't think it should be about what our Bible looks like. My Bible may look like this, but if I'm dead in my heart, you know that it doesn't matter how my Bible looks. And you know, we love to spiritualize it and be like a Bible that's falling apart is a life that is not. But truly, we don't truly know that. I could be a poser and really not know Jesus and just spend a lot of time in my Bible crafting or whatever. I mean, remember in 1 Samuel 16, 7, the Lord tells Samuel, the Lord doesn't see as man sees looking at the out word appearance, but it looks at the heart. And that's what I would really encourage you to. If your Bible looks like this and nowhere near this, but you're right with God and you're alive and on fire for the Lord, that's all that truly matters. While I do want to encourage you to get in the word and to get crafty and engage the word and be a student of the word and study it, I don't want you to look at me like I am some person that has all the answers or has it all figured out because that's not true either. I'm still learning, growing, broken every single day, but growing in the Lord and being sanctified by the Lord. Yet a lot of people have been very intrigued. Well, how did you get into Bible journaling? I'm scared to even start. How does the binding hold up? How did it get that big from just starting like this? So this is my experience with Bible journaling and it is how my Bible has like doubled in size. <laughs> First things first, and I'm trying to build a greater community so that we can design and make and publish our own study Bible with all of these kinds of resources that I've had to add into my Bible. I would love to work with Zondervan or Crossway, but I just simply need greater numbers to show them proof that we have a market impact here in our Bible nerd community. So I never say this, but make sure you're subscribed. It's free and all that happens is like you get a notification when I post a video so that we can show those Bible publishing companies that we really are a family that will invest in Bible Bibles that actually serve our needs. But all that to say, this is not necessarily a Bible that you can buy in a store. And I get that question all the time, so I just need to address it at the beginning of this video. No, you cannot go buy this Bible at the store. That is because I took a Bible, like what I was holding up earlier, the Net Bible right there. I took a Bible like that, and I started adding so many notes to it that it was messing with the binding, and I had to get it rebound. Crew & Co. so graciously rebound my Bible with my logo on it and my name. They do great work. Check them out. They have the best prices I've seen, and they're quality of work and their heart is amazing. It's like top tier leather and it just, it still smells so good. It looks good. I think it's patina is the word. It's like aged really well. I even, maybe like six months ago, I had my Bible on my bedside table because I was reading before bed and my water bottle spilt on my Bible and you would not be able to tell. Like it's just patinaed so well and it will hold up for forever. I'm sorry, wait, I have to put this down. It's way heavy. It's killing my... It's killing my wrist, it's so heavy. All right, the reason that this Bible is so big is because I have added stuff to my Bible. This is an ESV interleaved Bible, so naturally by itself, every other page is blank for notes. So it was already like set up for notes, and yet I still would fill up pages and wanna add space. Um, let's see, here in the Psalms, it is packed because I've been doing in-depth weekly Bible studies with my Patreons and we go, as you can see, super in-depth and I run out of space and I have to add pages. I love using thick scrapbook paper so it just is thicker and adds more depth to the actual page, which naturally then makes my Bible kind of go from doing this to this. That's just what's gonna happen. And yeah, to me, it's totally worth being in the Word of God, relentlessly just studying it like a student. Here's another example of in the Psalms where, as you can see on the bottom, I did like little tabby things, Psalm 125, 124, and there's notes on the different tabs. Here, let me move my chai tea out of the way. I've been obsessed with chai tea lately with oat milk and vanilla. Woo. Okay, anyway, um, another thing that I've added to my Bible, which I don't think made it much thicker, but it's been so valuable, is my cliff notes to the Bible. 
So these are just on normal printer paper. It's really thin. I don't think it's messed with the binding, but these really are a valuable addition to my Bible notes because they take me through every single book of the Bible with Bible study tips. So this is what this gospel is about. Here's the outline of it. Here's some Bible study tips when you're specifically reading this book, the date, the author, the intent, all of that kind of stuff is on each page for each book. Here's Mark's, let's see. Matthew's page, you get the idea. And these are download and print. So I printed them off and actually glued them in a Bible and I have a video all about it that I'll have linked in the description box. But just even adding these little tabs on the edge of my Bible is going to add thickness to this edge of my Bible and naturally make it, do you see how that kind of goes like this? That's just part of this. Again, it is so worth it for me to actually go in depth and understand the passage and take notes that will be there for next time. And all the while kind of ruin my binding, whatever that means. Again, Crew Co did such an amazing job. I really think this looks great for the amount of growth that it did as a book, but some people are really worried about their binding. But people always ask me, why do you have these tabs on the edge of your Bible and the tassels? What do they stand for? What do they mean? So basically the tassels mark Proverbs 31. It's just a good marker for the middle of the Bible, a reminder. It's just an important chapter of the Bible. That's all that these tassels right here are for. These tabs mark different topics that I want to have at quick glance. So like this one is um, a verse reference on God the Father and, and Trinitarian theology around that. This is a verse reference for the theological concept of common grace. This is a verse reference for the power of prayer or even just chapter references on these topics. Um, I have a lot that say contradictions, which are things that people say is a contradiction in the Bible and they use it to try and discredit the Bible, but really they are actually really interesting inside looks into the author's intent because more often than not, contradictions in the Bible are really just different theological intentions from the author. And I talked about this in my video on contradictions in the Bible, which I'll have linked down below in my description box. But as you can see, even on this page, I have like lots of scrapbook paper and all of it is, you know, that thick. It just kind of bulks up your Bible after a while. Now all of a sudden it's this thick instead of that thick and multiply that by however many times I've added paper into my Bible. It gets thick really quick. I've added charts and graphs and maps to my Bible. By using this type of paper that I find on Amazon, it, I'll have it linked down below, but you basically, you can put it through your printer like a normal piece of paper, but it's actually a big sheet of sticker. And so then I just print it out, cut it out and stick it in my Bible as a sticker. It's really nice, love that stuff. I added these tassels in a video with you guys and they're actually just starting to finally rip out. I expected this like a year ago, but they held up really well. I think it's been two years now that they've been in my Bible like this. So they lasted really well. All I have to do is re-hot glue them down and they'll be good to go. But I like doing things like this when I'm in depth studying a specific portion of my Bible that's all on one side. Like for example here, Proverbs 31, it's this big chunk right here. And all I do is take some plastic, use that same sticker paper I mentioned earlier, and I can kind of map out this section, highlight it, make it all messy without completely ruining the rest of the page. Sometimes I'll do things like this, which really bulked up my Bible, but it's so worth it. This is the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes and breaking it down with little note cards on each phrase. I loved doing that and it's a really good resource right there in my Bible. Sometimes I just highlight the lines of text, other times I draw boxes. My OG favorite thing to do is to draw this faux tape and make it look like it's a little sticky note taped down in my Bible or like right here. But as I started to run out of space on certain pages of the Bible, I've gotten really, um, it, let me go to John 10. I know John 10 is really starting to fill up because I've listened to a couple really good sermons on it lately. Here we go. So it originally was kind of just spaced out and little blobs, 
and then I started listening to a couple sermons on this passage right here and was eating it up. And now it's just reckless notes everywhere, wherever I can fit them. I'm not particular about color coding, so I literally just use whatever color. Oh, there's not green over here, I'll use green here. You know, oh, there's not yellow over here, I'll use yellow or pink or whatever it is. But literally our notes do not have to be perfect and aesthetic. I think that's a really big misunderstanding and barrier for new newbies wanting to get into Bible journaling. They're like, oh, it has to look good. And I'm like, uh-uh. I am the queen of, please don't try and make your Bible notes look good. Use bubbles one day and then come back another day, two years later, and just do a big, messy, large text box if you need to. Or if you come back six months from now and your pastor randomly says something about this one little passage, take a note. Just do whatever you wanna do, whatever you need to do in whatever way you wanna do it. This day, I wanted to have, the, it, I was taking notes about palm branches, so I wanted to use my cute little palm branch scrapbook paper. I remember sitting at my desk and going, ooh, I have palm branch paper, let me go use that. You know, like it's as simple as that. Do whatever you wanna do and you don't have to stick with it. You can use stickers one day, which I'm bringing back my Patreon stickers. Other times you might use boxes with faux tape. Other times you might write really, really small because you have a tiny little pen with you and you wanna save space. It's literally, whatever works. There is no right or wrong way, just be in the word of God. I think the enemy likes to intimidate us and basically tell us that we're gonna ruin our Bible, we're gonna regret this later, we're not artsy enough, it's not gonna look good, you know, to get us to stop and be scared and not actually get into the word of God. And those lies are from the enemy. And so the best way to conquer them is to just get into the word of God, cast aside all of the fears and just jump right in head first. So that's what I did. I think one of my first times Bible journaling in this Bible, I did it on camera with you guys, if I remember correctly. It's not something that has to be perfect because the cross has declared that over us. God didn't ask us to be perfect. He met that requirement with himself on the cross. So if you've been watching this video, clearly you're interested in Bible journaling, dive in. I would argue that the Lord is clearly calling you to it if you're watching this video. And especially if you've made it this far into this boring of a video where we're literally just looking at my Bible notes. <laughs> And if you want some more ideas or to do it along with me, check out this playlist right here. These are some of my favorite memories, Bible journaling, and we actually get to share them together. So make sure you've seen all these videos in this playlist. There's some really good ones in it. I'll see you guys right here.